around. One of the nicest runs in the Park Central. Yeah, it's fine. Just let the bags down anyway. Okay, sir. Oh, boy, you're really gonna like this room. I'm sure I will. Oh, not now, sir. Right over here, you look out this window, that's why you're gonna like the room. Because you can see the Central Park. That's the Central Park, that big ring thing. Yeah, well, it's real nice. Oh, not now, sir. Now, right down there, let me point out the things that you see. You can see the Pe Central Park Zoo, you can see the Central Park Lake, you can see the Central Park Carousel. The name of that statue down there was the General Chairman statue. I do not know the name of the pigeon. <laughs> Very interesting, and now, uh, thank Not you Not now, sir. First, yeah. we got to see whether you got enough hangers over here. Oh, for goodness sake, not enough hangers. Don't worry about it. I do worry, sir. You know, we can't let you put two suits on one hanger. I don't mind. We mind, sir. We mind very, very much here at the Park Central Hotel. You know what we say here at the Park Central? We say, we never take a chance on wrinkling your pants. <laughs> Well, that's very commendable, and I'll thank you very now, much. Now, sir, please, I've got to show you the heat control. Would you come with me, sir? Over here is what we call the temperature control. When you want it to be warmer, you turn it to warmer. <laughs> when you want it to be colder, you turn it to colder. Any questions? No, no oh, questions. That's very good. You catch on fast. But if you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to call on me. I won't. Promise? I promise. Because you know what we say here at the Park Central. Yeah, never take a chance on wrinkling your pants. That's not all we say. We also say, never be nervous, ask for service. Do you write these slogans? No, I make them up. <laughs> well, I would like to say some more, but I got to go. I hope you don't mind. I'll try to survive. Uh, sir? Now? <laughs> Here you are, thank you. Thank you. Oh, for goodness sakes, what you must think of me, sir. Oh, no, no. I forgot to check when you have enough towels. You know what we say here? We always say, if you have enough towels for your hands and your face, your bathroom can be a happy place. <laughs> Look, I don't care if there's... Oh, oh, I hate to report this. This is a blot on our thing, sir. I hate to tell you this, but you have enough face towels. You do not have enough bath towels. I will get you some, but what I want you to do, sir, yeah. if you are only washing your face, do not use up a bath towel. <coughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. See, that way, when you're going to take a bath, you'll have a bath towel. You know what we say here at the Park Central? Let me guess. Mm -hmm. Something like, uh, we always fret if our guests are wet? <laughs> no, we say, if you need a bath towel, you call the housekeeper. <laughs> Well, yours is very cute, sir. Okay. Okay, now please, please do not fail to call on me, sir. Remember that. If you need me, I am at your beck and your call. Uh, hey, boy. Boy, come back here a minute, will you? I want to ask you something. Come on. You bet. Yeah. Tell me, did you really mean what you just said, that you're ready to do anything at all for me? Of course. I wouldn't kid you about that. That's fine. That's a very good thing to know, son. Sure. You need me, you just ask for Jose. Yeah, it's fine. They know me. I'll bet they do. <laughs> Hello. Get me Plaza 31598. Take a chance on your pants. <laughs> oh, Sal. Look, Dom. I've decided to hit one more bank before we blow the country. Why? I've just stumbled on the perfect pigeon who'll help pull it off for us. <laughs> Look, don't ask any questions. Just get down here as fast as you can. Yeah. to be afternoon. Right. <laughs> Mr. Glick, may I ask you a question? Shoot. 
Are things so well under control in the hotel that the house detective can lounge about reading drivel? This isn't drivel, sir. This is research. Oh? Hennigan shoved the blonde off his lap, checked the safety of his Beretta, took a swig of bourbon and said, OK, baby, here's where we separate the men from the boys. <laughs> this is research? Yes, sir. Now, if that situation ever comes up, I'll know exactly how to handle it. I've been thinking of switching to a Beretta myself. You see, Mr. Phillips, I always like to stay one jump ahead of the criminal. Now, the Beretta is a small gun. That's the beauty of it. Just slap her in the old shoulder holster. No telltale bulge. See, it's the kind of a gun that you can dance with and not be embarrassed. Oh, that's fascinating. But may I make one point? You're supposed to be preventing crime, not reading a book. Now, you think just because I'm reading that I don't have my eye on everything that goes on around here? Well, I don't miss a thing, Mr. Phillips. As a matter of fact, I am blessed with fantastic peripheral vision. Indeed. 360 degrees. <laughs> Then, let me demonstrate. Now, after taking one quick sweep around this room, I will mentally photograph it and write down every detail in this pack. Now, watch carefully, Mr. Phillips. I take one swift look around like this. Ouch. Flowers. There. Somebody stole my patent pen. <laughs> Someday I'll come out of the office and the lobby will be gone. It'll never happen. I'm in it all the time. <laughs> Nick, you're incredible. You're the only house detective I know who has succeeded in having his own wallet stolen. That was during my lunch hour, sir. I was off duty. Those diabolical criminals, they always try to catch you when you're relaxed. With you, not being relaxed is a permanent state. Don't worry, Mr. Phillips. I'll catch that pickpocket or my name isn't Byron Glick. As a matter of fact, I've uh, devised an ingenious little plan. You see, the criminal always returns to the scene of his crime. Now, the next time that dip comes back and sticks his fingers into my back pocket like this. Oh! <laughs> Boy, that's smart. I don't believe it. Glick, I only hired you because your father was house detective here for many years. And a fine one he was. He's a remarkable man. How disappointed he must be that he never had any children. <laughs> now, here is Glick. I'm about to embark on a little detective work of my own. Uh, looking for a new detective. Don't worry. Don't worry, Mr. Glick. Mr. Phillips would never fire you. You remember all the great things that you did around this hotel. Like the time that you broke down the door to... <coughs> well, there was the time that you handcuffed yourself to... <laughs> well, how about that time you arrested that man and it was the president of that company. <laughs> you know something, you better worry. <laughs> yes, it's been a big month for me, Jose. You know, I've just about had it with this job. A man with my knowledge of crime detection having to watch fountain pens and towels. Why, it's like asking J. Edgar Hoover to babysit. <laughs> Let's not ask him to do that. <laughs> I ought to be out there getting into the big stuff, like that wave of bank robberies that's been sweeping Manhattan. Now, there's something that I can really sink my teeth into. Well, you know what you should do then? Mr. Glick, you should quit this job and go out there and let your teeth sink. <laughs> I can't quit, Jose. I need the job. I haven't finished making the payments on my gun yet. Uh, you just don't worry about a thing because you are a very good detective and someday people will realize that. Excuse me. Hello, Beldes. Oh, hello, Mr. Brown. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Oh, come on. You gotta cheer up, Mr. Glick. You are a very, very good detective. I will tell you one thing. If I ever needed a detective, you'd be the first one I would call on. You would, Jose? I surely would. Well, gee, thanks. If you ever really do need me, I want you to call me. Let me give you one of my cards. Okay. <laughs> my cards were in my wallet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, how about it? Don't I look like something out of Dr. Kildare? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I, I think that's going to work. You know something, honey? You are a genius. Remember when Ma tried to break us up? She kept saying you were just some cheap, ordinary crook. 
Mm -hmm. Well, after four bank robberies in a row, she's got to admit that you're at the top of your profession. Yeah. Plus, <laughs> I'd like to write and tell Ma about this, but the warden reads all her letters. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud of you. He goes to show you what a man could do when he settles down. Yeah. Uh, look, Dom, how does this note sound to you? This is a stick-up. My gang has you covered from every angle. Hand over your money and don't make a move or a sound for five minutes after I've gone. If you want to stay alive. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Baby, you should have been a writer. You're the Hemingway of the hoods. <laughs> Tell me something, though. How do you always manage to find the right pigeons for these jobs? Oh, this one's better than a pigeon. This one jumped right out of a cuckoo clock. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, that's him. Uh, just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nurse. Uh, would you answer that, please? Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Brown. <sighs> Hello? Oh, for goodness sake, Mr. Brown, what in the world happened? Oh, uh, I'm afraid I've had one of my seizures. But I'll be all right. They come and go. Okay, well, I better call up the house doctor so we can get you before you go. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I mean, uh, Miss Walker is here to look after me. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm a registered nurse. Well, I think it's very nice that you registered. But this man, <laughs> this man is too sick to care whether you vote or not. <laughs> oh, yeah, he came out of the clock, all right. Huh? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's time to check Mr. Brown's pulse. Oh, okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now I know what happened. You got a chill. Remember, I told you, if you want it to be warmer, you turn it to warmer. No, no, it's nothing like that. It's just something that happens to me every time I come to a big city. You know, the smoke, the air pollution. Oh, what a shame. You are polluted. <laughs> well, look, son, I recollected your kind offer of service, and I wonder if you could do me a favor. I have to make a withdrawal from my bank, yet I'm too ill to make the trip myself. Oh, you shouldn't even think of that, Mr. Brown, until you get over your pollution. <laughs> Well, I wondered if you could make the withdrawal for me. It's quite important. I'll be very happy to. Uh, Miss Walker, would you uh, hand him my bank book over there, oh, please? Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, the withdrawal slip is already made out. All you have to do is hand it to the teller, and he'll give you the money. Now, it's quite a good-sized amount, so you better use that case over there. Oh, it's a, a national bank on 53rd. You know where it is? Patty's on 53rd. <laughs> are baffled by the recent wave of bank holdups. With the criminals still at large, it is feared more robberies will take place. Hi, Mr. Glick. Nervous bank officials have announced that they will call upon the police commissioner this afternoon and demand action. Today in sports, there are only two games scheduled. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. They still haven't caught those naughty robber people. <laughs> now, why can't I be out working on a case like that? You know what? You would catch them. Well, I've been figuring it out, Jose. Let's look at the M.O. M.O.? Yes, modus operandi. That's a little term we use to denote, uh, M.O. <laughs> now, there have been four robberies so far, each committed in the same manner, but each time by a different person. First a fat man, then a tall one, then young, then old, but always the pattern remains the same. The threatening note, the teller hands over the swag, and the culprits walk out unchallenged. It's, it's like a big jigsaw puzzle. There's only one thing missing. What's that? All the pieces. <laughs> I tell you, Jose, these men are absolute geniuses. They're my kind of crooks. I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Glick. I bet that they are very happy that you are not chasing after them. Because you would catch them with one of your, your clever devices, you know? Like, like the mousetrap you used to, to catch those, those pickpocket people. Well? I gotta go now. Where are you going? Well, I got to do an errand, you know, for Mr. Brown up in 608. He told me to make a withdrawal from the bank. You'll be carrying money? That's what he's withdrawing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got to go, sir. Uh, don't blab it all over the place. Now, I better drive you down. You'll feel a lot safer with me and Betsy. <laughs> you going to bring a girl? <laughs> the old equalizer, my gut. <laughs> Got. Now, you see, carrying a lot of money around could be a risky business. Mm -hmm. see, now, the important thing is for us to slip out of this lobby completely unnoticed. Now, 
You go along, I'll follow behind and cover you from the rear. Okay, let's go. <laughs> what is going on here? You got to keep quiet, Mr. Phillips. It's a glitch is slipping out, I know that. <laughs> all right, but I better check it out. You stay here. Inspector Glick, special investigator for the Park Central Hotel. We're making a little withdrawal for one of our guests, and I'd appreciate it if you'd keep your eye open for any funny business. Well, certainly I'll keep you covered till you get out. <laughs> Let's go. You know, Mr. Glick, this is the bank where I have my Christmas club. Yes, well, it certainly is a good, solid-looking bank. Well, I want to tell you something. The robber persons would think twice before they do anything to this bank. <laughs> Hello. Good afternoon. May I help you? Yes. We want to make a withdrawal, please. <laughs> something wrong? Well, let's hustle it up, Bob. We don't have all day, you know. <laughs> yes, sir. Wow, that really is a lot of money. It's a good thing I came along. Quite a pile, huh? It's more. Can you imagine how long you'd have to work to earn this much money? A long time. Sure is a lot easier just withdrawing it like this. That's right. Any more? Oh, no, no, that's all, fellas. That's Honest. That's okay, we trust you. <laughs> um, could I have a calendar? <laughs> okay, let's go. You go out and I'll flank you. Thieves in this hotel. I might as well take some of these myself. <laughs> uh, do we have to listen to that? Well, I got to do something to pass the time. This waiting is driving me crazy. Relax, doll. This may be one of our biggest hauls yet. Oh yeah. Oh, that must be our little delivery boy. Now answer that, will you? Hello. What's the matter? He's got somebody with him. Here, you get back there and cover me. Get back. Oh, Over there. Who you got with you? I got Mr. Glitz, the house detective. <laughs> Watch. Uh, come in, gentlemen. <laughs> That's Mr. Glick, the house detective. That's Mr. Brown, the rich person. To what do I owe the honor of a visit from the house detective? Uh, just a little Park Central service. I thought I'd go along just to see that there was no trouble. What trouble? By getting the money out of the bank. And there uh, wasn't any trouble? Smooth as glass. <laughs> I even got a calendar. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, it's okay, nurse. You can come out now. Everything all right, Mr. Brown? Uh, yes. Uh, they're a matched set. <laughs> That's uh, quite a withdrawal you made there. Uh, yes, uh, I'm involved in a very big business transaction. Oh, that's right. You know, Mr. Brown is a very big businessman. Yes. Hey, wait a minute, Mr. Brown. You, you're out of bed. And why are you packing? You're leaving us? Well, I took a sudden turn for the better, and Miss Walker thought I'd better get out of the city. Fresh air, sunshine, oh, yes. you know. That's right. He was polluted. <laughs> well, I better escort you down to your car. That's quite a bit of money you're carrying, and you never know when you might run into a crook. <laughs> well, Mr. Glick, I think I can have... A late three. news headline. Another bank robbery. Two men posing as a bellboy and a house detective at the Park Central Hotel made off with over $100,000 from the National Bank on 53rd Street. How do you like that? What a diabolical way to rob a bank. Posing as a bellboy and a house detective. 
Jose, we're going to have to slip out of this hotel room completely unnoticed. I have an alternate plan. Let's raise our hands. You? Yes, I'm that naughty robber person. What a pair! Are you really a house detective? Yes, but this has been a bad month for me. Well, I'd better relieve you of your gun. All right, where do you keep it? Well, Don't reach. Just talk. About what? <laughs> where do you keep it? Well, it's... Uh... Oh, don't lie to him. He's very dangerous. Mr. Brown, he keeps it right there in the back pocket. Always keeps it in the back pocket. Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else's book. <laughs> okay, get your hands up. <laughs> Not you, Mr. Blade. You better let me handle the artillery, Jose. Hey, it's a Beretta. <laughs> Gee, that's keen. Oh, no, I know you're in there. Oh, come on in. Come on in, please. There you are, officers. The two men you've been looking for. My house detective and my bellhop. Jimenez, I can't believe the radio reports. Stupid as you may be, there must be some explanation for this. Oh, no, no, there's an explanation. That's not us, it's the bad people. That's the, the people over there. They were the people, the robber people, Mr. Brown and that nurse. He sent me to the bank with a withdrawal slip, and all the money is in that little bag over there. Mr. Brown. Well, come to think of it, I have seen your picture in the police gallery. In fact, you're wanted all over the country. I knew it. Officer, obviously Jimenez was an innocent dupe. You see, I am the innocent dope. <laughs> but he is not a dope. He's a very smart man, and he captured the criminals all by himself. Right. <laughs> I did? Yeah. It's your mousetrap. Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course, the mousetrap gambit. Yeah, mousetrap <laughs> I can't imagine how on earth that happened, but obviously you deserve some form of congratulations. Could we have money? <laughs> Uh, just part of the job, Mr. Phillips. Just another routine arrest. All right, you two. Let's go. Uh, uh, just a moment, officer. This is not the best publicity in the world for the Park Central. The lobby is filled with photographers and reporters whom I'd like to avoid. Uh, you understand? We must be discreet. Don't worry about a thing, Mr. Phillips. I'll see that I slip these two out of the hotel completely unnoticed. <laughs> Let us not press our luck. <laughs> Excuse me. Just one more thing. You are a disgrace to the nursing profession. <laughs> Morning, Chief. Morning, Chief. <laughs> Mr. Click, huh? I have been looking for you. There he is. He's the best house detective in the whole world. Indeed. You probably think, uh, Mr. Phillips, that just because I rounded up a band of bank robbers single-handedly that I'm resting on my laurels. Well, nothing could be farther from the truth. That's right. Tell them about that marvelous plan you have for protecting the letterbox. Well, it is rather ingenious if I say so myself. And the simplicity of it is simply fantastic. You see, Mr. Phillips, in each letterbox... I know what's in each letterbox. 